So today I just want to take a look at what went wrong with that whole libertarian convention performance speech, whatever you want to call it, that Donald Trump insisted that he go and make. Um, it, I, I find uh, Donald Trump very interesting on a, on a whole bunch of other levels. I guess I should have been a psychologist, which I'm not, by the way. But I want to look at some of the, the nuances of just what the hell went wrong. I mean, the, the closest thing I can compare it to is the incoming flight of the Hindenburg into New Jersey, right? Here comes this dirigible, beautiful, um, state-of-the-art, although they, they couldn't get the helium, right? So they had, they had to go with hydrogen, um, which is kind of like a major faux pas um, in the whole situation. And then, you know, coming in in a rainstorm, mm, maybe not so good. I uh, could have, should have done a few loops around right until the storm cleared, but it's sort of like that, you know, so Donald Trump's coming into this libertarian convention and, you know, some of the, the thought processes behind that in his campaign team, you know, it just makes you wonder what in the hell, but I, I don't blame the campaign team. I think it's, it's Trump. And I want to go into some of this stuff, um, as to, to why he thought he could win over these libertarians. So I'm not going to play any clips of what happened there because it was a disaster. You've seen them. He insulted the libertarians and said, you know, if you just want to keep getting your three or four percent, um, don't do anything that I'm suggesting. Or I think he was suggesting an alliance really is what he was suggesting. And he sort of <laughs> insulted them and say, you know, listen, if you don't want that, if you don't want the alliance, if you don't want my help, I'm coming here as your savior, your Jesus. And if you don't want that help, uh, just go ahead, do what you're doing and get your three or 4% every four years. I mean, this is in after promising a cabinet position to somebody that is a libertarian of which I don't think there's any in the Senate or the house of representatives. The closest we have is Rand Paul. We'll talk about him. But even after promising a cabinet position, that didn't work. And then this whole thing with Ross Ulbricht, who, why Ross Ulbricht? Why is he a big deal with libertarians? Well, evidently, they see him, he's been in prison since 2013. Uh, it's an example of government overreach. And it, it sort of accentuates, his case accentuates the need for criminal justice reform. And Donald Trump said that he would commute the sentence, which they liked. They liked that, but it wasn't enough to win them over. I mean, after the insults and all that kind of stuff, I mean, mm. they weren't too keen on Donald Trump after that. So, you know, it just made me kind of wonder. Um, we, we don't hear about libertarians. You know, we hear the term. And I just wanted to kind of refresh everybody on what it is that libertarians believe. So here I am, I'm looking at Wikipedia, and essentially the platform emphasizes individual liberty in personal and economic affairs, avoidance of foreign entanglements in military and economic intervention in other nations' affairs and free trade and migration. The party opposes gun control. It calls for constitutional limitations on government as well as the elimination of most state functions. I don't know if that means that they want to take it back to the days <laughs> of, uh, of Washington. Um, you know, because when Washington was president, I think he only had four people in the administration. I mean, I don't, I don't know where that, that falls with the libertarian way of doing things. I don't know if they want to take it back to four people, but that's all Washington had. They also believe that the party favors minimally regulated markets, a less powerful federal government, strong civil liberties, including LGBT rights, with the party supporting same-sex marriage, the liberalization of drug laws, separation of church and state, open immigration, interesting, non-interventionism and neutrally and neutrality in diplomatic relations, um, free trade and free movement to all foreign countries and a more representative republic. So interesting here, folks, you know, they, as I mentioned, the immigration feature, I mean, this is starkly 
in contrast to what Donald Trump believes. If you go to the libertarian website, lp.org, it says that libertarians believe that if someone is peaceful, they should be welcome to immigrate to the United States. Libertarians believe that people should be able to travel freely as long as they are peaceful. We welcome immigrants who come seeking a better life. I believe that as well, uh, if you heard my last podcast. So that is, is what they believe, folks. And the closest thing we have is Rand Paul. So let's just look at what Rand Paul's been up to here. Let's, let's catch up with uh, curly-haired Rand Paul. So what has he voted on, Senator Rand Paul? And as far as Trump's administration, what has he voted with and against? So interestingly enough here, folks, on the measure of objecting to Pennsylvania's presidential electors, Donald Trump supported that, Rand Paul voted no on the measure of objecting to Arizona's presidential electors. Rand Paul voted no. So these were measures where Donald Trump was trying to undermine our diplomatic processes that we, or excuse me, democratic processes that we have in the United States, obviously. So that's, that's good. I mean, that's exactly what you want. I don't think you're going to have to worry about Rand Paul uh, putting party over country, which is a good thing. Now, I, I tend to look at some of the other stuff. I don't really agree with um, some of the other things. You know, Rand Paul can be a little bit of a loose cannon. But that's where Rand Paul stands. And the, the other question that I've got, folks, is, okay, so that's kind of who they are. How close did Donald Trump get? with his policies to pleasing libertarians. Well, let me just run through it real quick. Some libertarians appreciate Trump's tax cuts, deregulation efforts, and his stance against big government intervention in the economy. Okay, that's a plus. Judicial appointments. That's a plus, I mean, for libertarians when it comes to Trump's economic policies. Now, for judicial appointments, Trump's appointment of conservative and libertarian-leaning judges, particularly to the Supreme Court, has garnered support. Second Amendment rights, as I mentioned before, Trump's strong support for gun rights appeals to libertarians. Opposition to progressive policies. Some libertarians oppose progressive policies like increased government spending, universal health care, and, and heavy regulation which they associate more with the Democratic Party. They view or may view Donald Trump as a bulwark against these policies. Foreign policy, Trump's skepticism of foreign interventions is sure to win points with them. Another point is his populism and anti-establishment sentiment is sure to win points with them. Individual freedom and anti-mandate stances, um, Trump's opposition to certain mandates and restrictions resonated with libertarians but it wasn't enough you know all of that including him throwing in a cabinet position to a libertarian including him commuting the sentence of ross ulbrecht all of that wasn't enough so at the end of the day donald trump thought he could waltz in there and he thought that he could turn on the trump charm that didn't work and he as i mentioned tried the bribery approach, you know, with the cabinet and the commuting of the Senate of Ross Ulbricht. That didn't work. So there's, there's so much that they don't like about Donald Trump that the things that they do like just were insignificant. <laughs> At the end of the day, folks, I've got my list here. I've, I've done this over the weekend. I've come up with a list of the Donald Trump insecurities, and I've got nine of them here, and I'm going to apply them to certain podcasts that I do, but I think Donald Trump's little escapade to the Libertarian Convention here unlocked insecurity number eight, which is exaggerated self-image. Trump's portrayal of himself as an exceptional and almost infallible leader can be a sign of an inflated self-image, which is often a defense against underlying self-doubt and insecurity. So they've really unlocked his his insecurity about an exaggerated self-image. I and he's he's been quiet out there today, folks. 
there's not much going on. He's been awfully quiet. So he's kind of nursing his wounds, I guess, at uh, Bayou L'Orange, also known as Mar-a-Lago. But he'll be back, and we'll be there too. Till then, folks. <laughs>